Hey everybody, this is Dr. Osborne with a research update answering your question, does gluten cause nerve damage? Now this has been a one of those areas in research where a lot of doctors, you go to a lot of doctors and uh, they'll tell you no, gluten has nothing to do with nerve damage. Now if you've ever had that happen to you, those of you diagnosed with celiac disease, those of you who have a gluten sensitivity, it's time to run the other direction and here's why. Let's look at some research. This was published in the journal Lancet Neurology, Gluten Sensitivity from Gut to Brain, all about gluten as a neurological disease. So if you can see here what I've highlighted, gluten sensitivity is a systemic autoimmune disease with diverse manifestations. The disorder is characterized by abnormal immunological responsiveness to ingested gluten in genetically susceptible individuals. Now I'm going to stop right there just so that we can kind of de-speak all that cluttered language. <clears throat> what that really means is that people with gluten-sensitive genetic susceptibility react to gluten through an immune response, meaning the immune system responds to the gluten creating an attack. In essence, in what it's saying in this study is that Gluten-sensitive enteropathy is only one aspect of a range of possible manifestations. That means that celiac disease is only one way that gluten can create damage. But what this research study is showing and saying is that neurological manifestations in patients with established celiac disease has been reported since 1966. It was not until 30 years later that in some people, gluten was shown to manifest solely with neurological dysfunction. Again, this is coming out of the Lancet Neurology Journal. Now, that's not all I've got for you today. We've got some more research updates. So you can see here in this study from the journal Frontiers in Psychiatry, emerging data show that 30% of people with schizophrenia, now we're talking about bread madness here, crazy schizophrenia, as they used to call it, crazy, right? Bread madness, have elevated anti-gliadin antibodies, meaning that 30% of those that have a diagnosis of schizophrenia have antibodies to gluten, okay? This representing a possible subgroup of schizophrenics who actually have this problem as a result of gluten problems. So again, this is another form of neurological disease, although we don't typically tend to think of schizophrenia as nerve pain or nerve damage it very much is a neurological inflammation. And in 30% of these people, gluten can be one of the reasons why this happens. More research for you, gluten-related neurological dysfunction. This is coming out of the Handbook of Clinical Neurology. And what it's saying is that the term gluten-related disorder encompasses a spectrum of systemic disease with diverse manifestations, celiac disease not being the sole manifestation, but gluten-induced uh, neurological dysfunction is also one of the problems in the spectrum of gluten-related disease. Next research study from Reviews in Neurology that neurological disease associated with gluten sensitivity. We've got neurological manifestations of gluten sensitivity with or without. Enteropathy means gut damage, okay? So with or without enteropathy are also frequent. Their cause, pathogenesis cause, including an immunological attack on the central and peripheral nervous tissue accompanied by neurodegenerative changes. Central and peripheral, what does that mean? That means it can attack the brain and spinal cord, but it can also attack your peripheral nerves that feed your arms, your legs, etc., leading to brain ataxia. Cerebellar ataxia is a form of Neurolo neurological damage that can make people very dizzy and imbalanced, and then peripheral neuropathy, which is a painful neuropathy type of disorder that, uh, that can create abnormal sensation in the hands and the feet and increased pain, increased hypersensitivity, and other symptoms like burning pain or radiating pain. So in this study, again, gluten can contribute to neuropathy, both in your central and in your peripheral nervous system. Now that we got another study here, fibromyalgia, oftentimes fibromyalgia is not really referred to a nerve disease, but it actually is. Fibromyalgia is truly is a nervous system disorder where your ability to perceive pain is altered so that you're always hurting. And so 
In this particular study, you can see the observation supports the hypothesis that non-celiac gluten sensitivity may be an underlying cause of fibromyalgia syndrome. Now, we've also got autism. Now, a lot of people also do not consider autism to be a neurological disease, but autism can, is very much a neurological disorder. Now, gluten, not the sole cause or the only cause, but the conclusion in this research study was a subset of children with autism display increased immune reactivity to gluten. The mechanism appears to be distinct from that in celiac disease, meaning these kids don't have to have celiac disease for the gluten to impact them. And so what, what's being found is increased antibodies to gluten and um, in, in its associated with, association with GI symptoms point to a potential mechanism involving an immune or intestinal permeability, aka leaky gut, that can affect children and the way their behavior manifests. So again, a link to autism for gluten sensitivity. And then we have Another study, and this one, I, I pulled this one up for you because a lot of people um, say, you know, I eat gluten and, I don't, and my stomach doesn't hurt or my gut doesn't hurt. And so they dismiss gluten as a potential reason. Now, what I've just shown you are several studies that show that gluten doesn't have to lead to gut problems. It can actually just affect the nerves. And that's very, very true. But here is the re one of the reasons why that can happen. This study found that gluten can actually, because there are a number of proteins in gluten, they're called gluten exorphins then these proteins can mimic opiates, drug-like effect. And remember, opiates are pain-relieving medications or a class of pain-relieving medications. Well, gluten has opioid-like proteins that can mask the inflammation and pain that occurs in the gut. So in essence, gluten can mask its own toxicity. Thus, the person who has having this particular impact could be eating gluten, not feel it in the GI tract, but slowly over time as that gluten makes its way into the bloodstream starting to damage the nervous system, it can take years for gluten-induced neurological damage to occur because of this mask, masking-like effect that it can have. Now, here's another research study on a type of condition called transverse myelitis as a manifestation of celiac disease, which you can see here after the start of a gluten-free diet. Okay, this, this in this particular case study, this young child recovered completely. So this is the first pediatric case of transverse myelitis as a man's manifestation of celiac disease, meaning this person did have celiac disease but developed transverse myelitis, which is a very highly inflammatory neurological disorder and recovered after taking or taking on a gluten-free diet. So the answer to the question, does gluten cause nerve damage? Absolutely yes, beyond the shadow of a doubt. Make sure you subscribe to our gluten-free research updates. Make sure that you click the bell so that you can get notified when we have new videos out. Make sure you leave a comment below. I'd like to hear your story. Did you have an experience with gluten causing nerve damage? Let us know. And also make sure you click that video to the left and watch more on gluten-induced nerve damage. Have a great day. This is Dr. Osborne, founder of Gluten-Free Society, signing out.